okay? Well, let's hope that this works. All good, guys? All got internet? Oh, wow, George is... Okay, well, uh, do what you can. Stop me if you need help. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank you for submitting the first homework. It's a lot of work. I know it's more difficult than the pre-work, and you know we, we only learn by putting the time and really appreciate it. Give us um, a few days to grade them. It's a lot of work to grade as well, um, and give you review. We have graded a couple of, of homework, but there's no time to do all of them. Make sure you include the readme file. We always have a readme template. So check them. It's important to keep a good readme file because you know for any project that you do, it's not people are not going to read your code for um, to, to know what you do. So it's important to try to explain it and use the, the markdown format. Now last week we did a little bit of this in class, understanding the MVC structure and creating some model migration. Uh, some of you now know the flash messages. I didn't have time to cover it next time, uh, last time, but we always revisit it, so, so that's not a problem. You, some, um, some of you know how to add. We all did it in the lab, adding columns to a, an existing model, and then we can start using all these has many and belongs to relationships. Some may use the has many through and has and belong to many. Those are the less common, has many through is very common. Um, those are useful as well. And when you need to use it, it's easy to read. Uh, but if you have any questions, please uh, just ask. Welcome. Bing, right? So I want to say thanks you know, to a lot of you to, for making a ton of uh, you know, effort. I have some excellent submission I want to show. Um, one is, is by Guan, uh, where's Guan? Yeah, so uh, just, this is just a fabulous um, submission. So besides Bootstrap, you can use, this one uses um, the material UI layout. Give it a few minutes to load. But as you can see, it's, it can be quite creative with the uh, layout and you can um, you can add to cart by these dynamic messages. So you have two of these guys to the order. So it's quite cool. All right. And uh, overall, it's great. Now check it out. And there's another one. So you don't have to be the best submissions, but you know when you put in the effort to make it both look good and it's not gold. It's for this Ruby on Rails class, we have to learn both, you know, front end and back end stuff. And a lot of you run into problems with Bootstrap JavaScript, um, and that's, you know, um, hopefully next time I include better instructions. Say, hey, don't do this. We never ask, but some of you just like to compile your assets, and then you know if you do that, you run into problems. Don't push your assets to Heroku. Don't compile. So this one is is you know another uh, great layout uh, by Lan. Okay, uh, it's it's cool and uh, again support all the features. These guys just really try to do most of the features, uh, if not all. And another one by Harry, um, also great. It's very hard to see from from this screen, but it's, yeah, this is a good way to see it. So. Take the time to make this order page display all the items, right? That's great. I really like them. You guys can do it like you know much better looking than that I can I can build myself. And this is uh, by uh, Tu over there. Uh, and again, like some reviews. And so that's pretty cool. And generate some names. And uh, last one is Hill. Where's Hill? Still learning. Okay, win, right? I have like. Three, four here in the other class. So it's so hard to remember. So uh, the UI on this one is not as as you know as fancy uh, as the other ones, but still all the functions are there. It's great. Uh, so I, we the TAs 
help me choose some of these, and uh, there are great other great ones as well. But uh, those are the if I miss you know your submission uh, as like one of the best, let me know. Uh, but we will definitely review everyone. So, all right. So it's actually important to discuss homework one. We spent so much time. We learned a lot of new things. Let's ask you a few questions, right? I have this over here. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, let's discuss homework one. All right, I'll walk around and ask, uh, what were the most challenging or confusing things? Did someone volunteer? A friend over here, what's your name? From, yeah. What's the most challenging part of the homework? Um, um, I, um, I had uh, one challenge and uh, I, um, I uh, get a pass out order. Must get passed? Pass out order. Okay. Oh, so the order, I've, this one is nested route, right? Food item orders path. So it's a, a challenge, getting nested routes. In my video of the last uh, class lecture, I link, I mentioned nested routes, but in the one we covered last time, I didn't mention it. You can actually have orders, it's the restful routes inside food items. Right, so that's nested routes. Anyone else? Other challenge, Joe? Um, to use any gem or not is totally up to you. I recommend that because we're learning. I don't care if your your code, you know, cannot run if ten people use it. I care that you actually learn a lot from making this mistake. So. If you have to write ugly code and then you improve on it, that's better than using some beautiful gem and then you write two lines of code. So it's really up to you. So what's your question? Uh, use gem for, I mean, we all need gems, right? Did you use no other gems? No? Okay, good. So for example, pagination, that one's hard. Use terminary or will paginate. Those are the two popular gems. Uh, and then for your example, in your app authentication, except for this homework, you have to write user and stuff again um, yourself to understand it. But in the future, for any project, feel free to use device or any other gem for user you know, authentication. And then for permission checking, that's called, what is it called? Author yeah, authorization. And that can be tricky. Sometimes writing it yourself first helps you understand. Uh, they're the top five gems out there to help you with authorization take very different approaches, and it can be very hard uh, to figure out. Now, after trying one, you like it, just use that one, that's okay. So if you like to use one, um, feel free to. So does that answer the question? What gem, I would say, any gem you want, just feel f you can check as well. But I prefer you to, if you can build it yourself, don't be shy. It's, it's completely okay. Yeah. If you don't like to use bootstrap, you know, that's okay. Any other challenges? Mm. Okay, so that one's good. Uh, try to write a make Ajax call, and then do you use um, the JavaScript front end framework for Ajax call, or do you do you use uh, Rails data remote and then handle it? Okay, uh, it's not here. Um, it really doesn't matter if you use the Rails way. It will still be very fast because of Turbolinks and this 
it's very easy to write. We can cover some of that. I'll try to make sure we have that in our demo. Any other challenges? All right, what's some interesting things you want to share with the class? So, for example, you have material design UI stuff. Like, do you like it for your project? So is it easy to integrate with Rails? Uh, easy. It is a uh, Jam, Material, and SCNS. OK. Some kind of language. Yeah, similar to Bootstrap. Does it add more JavaScript that can make it uh, interesting? Or just mainly CSS? So for example, you can have like pop-up. That's yeah. usually you know um, C and JavaScript as well. All right, what are some of these questions, right? I'm thinking we can share, um, think about these questions. It really helps, like, okay, with this app, of course, you know, I don't care about making it production ready, for example. If I build this, I say, oh, um, my email right now is done by making a synchronous call. It just means that the user has to wait until I finish sending the email. Then I return the page, for example. Well, it's not really production ready because then you have a long request and 10 people order, you have 10 long requests. What you want is to tell the user an email is going to be sent to you shortly and you create a background task and you run that task, for example. That's like production ready. Uh, another thing would be maybe images, right? You can use some services to make uploading images easy. But then you have to pay for it if you have a lot of users using it. File picker, or it's called file stack now, uh, is one of the very easy services for that. Or if you build a website for Vietnam, sometimes you realize that logging in by via Facebook is better. If you really launch it, no one has you know uses email address here. They just log in with Facebook. You know, okay, to make it production ready, I use Facebook login. So here, some of you get stuck in this, and I, I mentioned, oh, if you have an assets folder inside your public folder, remove that. If you push your, if, if you don't, if you push your project uh, to another server, means if you don't use Heroku, right, then when you push it to that server, you have to run assets compile. You compile your assets so that all your many JavaScript become one JavaScript file, minified, all CSS become one. And usually, if you use certain tools like Capistrano to deploy, it, it runs that for you. If you just put the code on the server, to make it production ready, you should compile it, right? So some people prefer to compile all these files into Git and then push it. That's okay. You just have to make sure you do it every time you change any JavaScript files. With Heroku, it always runs a few things. You, do you notice there's a, there's a gem called Rails 12 factor in your gem file? Uh, yeah, Rails 12 factor. In that gem, it says that, hey Heroku, like when I push, basically serve the assets, uh, you know, static assets, they already compiled, they're there. Don't try to load the JavaScript in a funny way. It means they're just there, load them. And then when you push to Heroku, there are Git hooks by Heroku that will run all this compiling the gems, um, compiling the assets. Assets mean JavaScript, CSS, and images. Um, and up removing the database.yaml file and change it with the Heroku one. So that's, that's what you do when um, you push to Heroku. So think about these questions. I'm not spending too much time. We will always run into this again. Uh, you will see that we do this all the time. Params that require something and permit. Uh, anyone is not sure what it does? Raise your hand, I can explain a little bit more. Okay, if you have a, a, a form for a food order, right? In the form, you say form for food order. When you click submit, 
all of this information, maybe name, right? Maybe um, quantity, get submitted under params, food order, right? A uh, food item, params, food item. So to get the value, you just say food item dot create, params food item. So that's before Rails four. But let me just see if I can show the code. Uh, we'll visit it very soon. So let me type, get a text editor right here. All right. So let's see. When you submit anything, you get a params and then say put item here. If you just this is the hash of the attributes, right? Name something, quantity something. So if you do food item dot create like this, it will complain that you don't have the permission to write because they Rails actually magically tell these params that some of these keys should not be used to update food item. So params food item is not just a hash, it's a hash with some magic in it. Permission checking. So to do this, usually what people do is you say instead of this, you do food item create. Actually you say, well, I allow you to look into my food item, so require a food item like that. And I permit, so you can write permit, you do this, it permit all the attributes. Right? But if you say you can update name and quantity. You cannot do anything else. So imagine if you have a user here and you have an admin column, true or false. You don't want people to submit, right? A user, someone will submit to this route like users123 uh, and so send a put request. It means update this record and then maybe in this request you have, you have user, it's a hash, and then is here like you know is admin true. You don't want this to happen. So you don't want to say user dot find params ID. So that will give you one two three, right? This is this is the params hash ID one two three and user like that. And then you say at update attributes params user. You don't want to do this. So Rails make it very safe, saying don't do it. Instead, you have to do that require thing. So you want to make it user params. It's just a method. And down here, you define user params is params.require user and permit. You permit something else. Maybe username, email. That's it. You don't want to let them choose anything else. Okay, so don't run this. And the bootstrap gem is funny. Uh, some of you run into this problem at, during the pre-work, and some of you run into this problem. You say, oh, my button doesn't work online. So if you go down here, tooltip require uh, this tether positioning. I technically, bootstrap should be very smart and say, well, you don't use tooltips and pop over, so don't require this. But somehow it's still in, in beta and it's a bug. Uh, if you require this itself, when you push to production, uh, it doesn't work. If you put just mini my, um, just push up the mean, maybe it work. So one to require this library, no one created a, a gem for tether. So one way is to use this different source, and then you can look go to this website. It it explained to you that you can use this website. And it, it loads a, a front end library tether managed by Bower. So this is like super complicated. Some people say, oh, this is too much. They create this gem. And you can also just do that, add that to your gem file. And then you require tether first, and then your code will work. A lot of you don't need any JavaScript for Bootstrap anyway. You just need something that's very easy to use for CSS. So this is enough. Rename this file and then do this. Don't even care about bootstrap. It's really up to you. All right. So let's cover this a little bit today. Authentication. Hello. Uh, 
we all know what it is, right? We need this to to um, get in to check like if people can get into the system. We also need this to do what um, communicate with user if they forget the password. If we want to let them know of some new features, just many ways, right? Otherwise, when they come back from a different device, how do we know who they are? To keep the give them the same data, right? So, who here has used device before? Raise your hands. Device, okay. Who here has used clearance before? No? Okay. Sorcery? Off logic? Which one? Sorcery? Okay. So, auth logic is, is super old. Back then, in 2008, 2009, uh, it was the most popular and become so big, like, this, they try to keep all this library work with every, you know, each ver version of Rails, so point, one point something, and then two, and three, four. I'd say device is the best because it's just, well, it's, it's a lot of code to include, but that's, that's okay. Make your job easier, and your app is, is more secure. Uh, this is very clean, but it's really up to you, okay? Uh, let's just do it ourselves. I create an app, and then we start from scratch. So for this homework today, uh, we're going to do a Snapchat, like clone for the web. Who here knows what Snapchat is? One hand, two hand. So Snapchat is this amazing app on your phone that you just send messages to friends. But you take a picture or you send some, it used to be just picture or video. And then after your friends see it, it disappears. So it's cool because, well, from my phone, I can take a lot of pictures. It doesn't use my phone space, right? It just go away. And their side, they have to see because if they don't see it, just disappear. They feel like, oh, man, what did I miss, right? So when you send something to someone, they really look at what you send. And then you can send something ugly. You don't care. It's beautiful. And of course, you know, this is the most, one of the most successful companies ever. Facebook tried to buy them for $3 billion after, you know, two years. And they were like, nope, not selling. And then everyone laughed, like, oh man, this is so stupid. Why don't you sell? And then, you know, a few years later, they're worth 20 billion now. So there's no way Facebook can do anything about it. And um, a lot of Facebook, you know, billionaires want to invest in Snapchat. So this is like the crazy, one, one of the craziest of all. When Facebook bought Instagram for 1 billion, people thought, like, oh, this is amazing. It's like under two years, you sell for that. But if Instagram didn't sell, it's worth 10 billion now. So we'll do something very boring on the web, right? <laughs> and uh, it's just mainly messages, but then we have to deal with the back end ourselves. So we create this app for this week, um, send messages to one another, create this account. Messages can only be read once. So go back to password. Well, it's important in any web course you teach, like don't submit anything that is uh, sensitive, your password, Gmail password in your code, if you do that, push to GitHub, even if it's just five minutes, you may lose it already. There are bots all over the world that just crawl GitHub for anything that looks like a credit card, you know, Amazon uh, web services, it happens to my friends and uh, everywhere on the web, like, you know, people do that for uh, Amazon simple storage, right, S3 bucket. So if you have the key, you can f store files on Amazon. And people just push it. Oh, you know, it's like, not that important. And people, that gets stolen. And at the end of the month, Amazon bill you thousands of dollars. So it's like, oh, okay, what to do now? So you talk to Amazon and they, okay, they say, I'm nice to you once, but some people lose money that way. Um, email, the same thing, credit card, or if you have a product, right, your, um, if you build a website and suddenly over the weekend, a thousand people use it, and you're like, oh, this is cool. Let me just clone the data to my local database. Okay, you know, clone it, Postgres SQL clone, and then I'm going to dump all my f data into YAML file, okay, happily in my YAML file. I'm going to commit my YAML file to my project. And then you push it online. <laughs> and then all your emails are like, you know, of your friends are given to strangers. And to, for passwords, go back to password, 
obviously, we don't store a password in the database. You're all experienced in programming, so I don't have to explain that. Uh, make it expensive. That's, I have to explain a little bit to calculate a hash. So let's look at some crazy stories. Um, well, this is nothing. 1.2 million is nothing. But, you know, they basically someone, um, someone say, okay, you, you did something that maybe your 80, 38 million users actually, um, the, the password that they use sometime in the past or now may be guessable. <laughs> and then, they, you know, they, they sue them and get some money. And, and actually the number is bigger, right? Like, Basically, even you just release password hints, like you can't really do that for, for you, know, you can't really guess the password from the hint. This is just encrypted password, right? But when you have 153 million people, a lot of them will have the hints to be the same as the password, <laughs> you know? Well, they put the hint like girlfriend birthday, and then you just easily can find it. So then you can write a script and, and can generate a lot of the password stuff. So <laughs> this is like really fun. It's like a crossword puzzle. Someone dump this data and then you can, uh, can, can do that. Uh, try to find, guess the password. Another thing is that link, uh, this is, if you read more about it, is somehow they hashed the password incorrectly. So I don't really understand. But that's a, it makes it even easier to guess the password. So LinkedIn is a funny one. Actually, when this happened, uh, when I went to work in 2011, I was, the, we open it, um, I think this, this, that is basically uh, 2012, and it took two years to have this, this lawsuit thing. Uh, basically, they encrypt the password with SHA, S-H-A. Who knows this SHA encryption? Yeah, SHA-256. It's like awesome, you know, you encrypt something and you have this SHA string, and I think GitHub uses your GitHub commit, all this Git thing is the unique string, right? Uh, in GitHub, like your code so far, it just encrypt that and uh, hash that into just one way, you know, this, this long string. And that uniquely, that string uniquely represent your code. So it cannot be the same if the two strings are different. How can I do that? SHA is a very fast encryption. Exactly. So, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So of course you shouldn't use it just in, to encrypt password. Yeah, but for for GitHub saying your code is a lot and then it still can encrypt using SHA, calculate very fast and you have the string. So it say for any two git commit, the string that is called the git commit hash or you know an uh, ID which is a hash cannot be the same if your code is different, right? In fact, it cannot just ever be the same. It add a little time stamp to it. Now. That's, that's good, that's the algorithm to encrypt something, uh, to, to hash something very fast. You shouldn't use it for password. Here's what LinkedIn does. It used SHA, and then it also didn't use assault. When two people have the same password, if you use assault, assault here, let's say, so it's current time, then the encryption lead to two, two hash, password hash that cannot be the same. Because it's like down to millisecond, microsecond. And there's no way you can enter the same password at the same time. So what LinkedIn uh, does is that there was no salt. It's just default. So when someone leaked this database, you can actually do a dictionary. You take a dictionary of words and sentences, sentences and then you run SHA on it, SHA hashing, because SHA is super fast. You can run the entire dictionary and all these common phrases, and then you have that. Now you check. Right? You just do matching. Oh, this hash is the same as this LinkedIn database. It means that user used the, the password. I'm not stupid. Right? So we, that's basically, if you want to, uh, it's, it's very fun because you can generate, generate like my grandma, I love grandma. And then you run that SHA and, and you get that uh, string. You compare back to this LinkedIn database <laughs> and it's there. It's like amazing because, you know, so many people, they actually use that kind of password. So yeah, so back then, that's back then, right? LinkedIn, even though you're very smart people, they make a mistake. So, like this is basic mistake, so let's not make them. Uh, Snapchat actually had another problem. 
but that's that's a different story. So with session storage um, is what we use to store a sort of a cookie to know the you know, user is logged in. Who here is familiar with sessions like cookie in the browser? Okay, so like some of you cookies like you know uh, you find that for your website this URL you can have some it allows you a little small storage you can store some data it's just some key value it's like a hash right it, yeah four kilobytes four zero nine six <laughs> funnily even in old rails um, they didn't bother to encrypt it so then you're like oh let's store this user ID as one two three or something like that they were here at this time and you can just go to cookie and you like ah oh, okay this is what they store it's read only the cookie you know you can tell the rail server to change the cookie but because you know it sometimes you can hack it in other ways if you just tell the rails browser my cookie is this way with the uh, rails new rails and of course all web framework they encrypt the cookie in the browser and because cookie is too small sometimes you have to store the whole session in the back end and then only use an identifier on the front end really depends on your app for our purpose of programming it's just session user ID is user dot ID so every time users click login we check the session if session user ID is something okay you log in you are this session uh, this user if it's nil oh you're not logged in can you please log in if it's something, we show them the logout button. When they click, click logout, what do we do? Yeah, we just delete this guy. Right? Sometimes you call it session.clear, clear everything. You can store the shopping cart. This is a good place to store uh, because when someone's shopping, right, you can create a cart when they first add something to the cart. But then every time this person visit your page you create a card for them that's a lot of cards and they're not used right so many people decide to only store the card after they check out so then you just store the the current cat in our card in the session right a fake ID that's a, that's a common way but for your homework if you do it just store the card like I don't care you know how many records only when you make these mistakes you do it in a very ugly way later when you do your real coding you know what the ugly way was so really don't worry about those but write clean code like you know write good Ruby code um, how do I oh my god all right that's a lot of talking and I mentioned session okay apparently because I have no more slides so let's actually do the homework and we will take a break with, to do some 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 uh, discussion on the group project. Okay. All right. So where's my? Um, yeah. What it's so. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. So let's again we'll implement the homework together. And this time you already know a lot more, so please ask questions if you're stuck here, okay? All right. And uh, I'm not sure how I'm, we're going to use the time. We'll take a five-minute break. I want to spend some time doing this group exercise. So I'll, maybe the first 20 minutes of after break. The group's exercise, basically, let's brainstorm ideas for the final project. Okay, so let's start just coding let me open up the terminal you can see okay right so maybe I have it in a demo um, folder let's go to the exercise I uh, know assignment tab so here's how we would do it uh, actually I'm, I want to record this in case we have a problem at home you can so why don't we do this later because I need to be 